Hello, welcome to the Blockchain Fundamentals video by Shreshta Rora from the ACTIT. This video is going to be in two parts. First part is that what you're watching right now, and second part is in somewhere in the links over here. The point of this video is to give you depth of knowledge how uh, blockchain works and how you can under, uh, utilize the blockchain technology to its best potential. We would be using a lot of content from 3 blue one brown in this video. And we would hope that you keep on till the end to understand the whole idea behind what led to the development of this very, I should say, technological leap. Because today, this buzzword is seeming like everybody wants to understand it. And we hope with this video that you could really understand the very crux and the essentials of this whole concept. We would not be skimming past over big ideas, but we would be really going into the depths of it. Not to the nitty gritties so that it becomes understandable, but at least so that you have a surface level knowledge so that you can you can go in depth. Not exactly surface level, but yeah, somewhere between it. So I would like to first start with the what is blockchain? It's an open distributed ledger that can record transactions between two parties efficiently and in a verifiable and a permanent way. Well, that's Wikipedia. But does that make sense to you? Like what's open? What does it mean to be a distributed ledger? Or what does it mean that recording transaction between two parties? It's too long to understand. Let's break it into simple parts. Open. It means that it is under it is publicly available anybody can read it distributed over here it means that it is with every entity on the network where every entity can mean every system or maybe machine for example every one on the bitcoin network is having is is having a ledger now um, if somewhere i distributed means that it's with everyone a single copy copy of all transactions a ledger is a history of transactions and p2p means peer to peer peer to peer means one system talking to another system to do a transaction there are no central entities involved what do we mean by central entities we will focus on later every part and aspect of this whole slide uh, this slide would be covered in depth forward words and it's also permanent this means once you get every everyone on the network uh, like everyone on the network you can delete it once anything goes into the blockchain and everybody on the network stores it on their uh, ledger you can't delete that entity from blockchain ever because that's how it's designed you need to be controllable of 51 percent but that's we are going to do in depth but this means for very simple sakes it's permanent right now there are many currencies that are using uh, cryptocurrencies that are using blockchain particularly bitcoin ethereum ripple little coin ethereum classic and a number of other entity uh, uh cryptocurrencies have surfaced but these and these currencies are interchangeable but to what uh, to a normal person it strikes as what does it mean of me having a bitcoin what does it mean that i have some 0.001 ethereum what does it mean that i can transfer some amount of bitcoin to some other amount of ethereum because end of the day these are just numbers crunching on systems systems like we own right now like the way the one you're watching the video on and basically the currency today runs this way the cryptocurrency and this has been a very big blow that there's so much potential in the market these days but i'm not making any market uh, predictions or anything in this whole video we're just going to focus on the fact how it works the basic idea of blockchain the how the block and the chain to two parts of it come together the main ideas that are going to be in the depth of it 
are digital signatures. Second, the ledger is the currency. The third is decentralization. Fourth is proof of work. And fifth is blockchain, how it is being used today. For example, this is something you might be seeing uh, away ahead in the video, but I just kept it over here so that you can get a glimpse how complex it might look like if I just showed you right now. So we're just going to break it down into very simple components and start with a very simple example. Very, very, very simple example of few friends who are trying to uh, get their finances account sorted out and how this actually is going to uh, revolutionize the way the world works. But let me focus on the fact, this fact that this ho uh, whole thing uh, is based upon, uh, the first part of it is based upon digital signatures. Now, digital signatures are basically cryptographic hash functions. These are hash functions Hash function means that when you put in like very basic, very basic thing, when you put in some amount of like some data, imagine it's a function and when you insert some data, it results in an say uh, output that is very specific to the input and cannot be reversed easily. Very simply, that's the go, uh, that's the function of a hash function and mostly of cryptography that how this whole system works. Now say, there are four entities right now that you're seeing the four symbols of pi that are actually created from the three blue one round video. Uh, how this thing comes into play is for example, you are four friends, Alice, Bob, Charlie, and mostly you, who go, on a, uh, go out eating somewhere outside. Now, or maybe a group of friends who try to uh, who, who hang out a lot together and when you do that you happen to have a ledger system for yourself for example alice pays bob dollar 20 then bob pays charlie dollar 40 charlie pays you dollar 30 and you pay alice 10 dollar 10 so the goal is after some amount of time let's say one month or two months or maybe when your mid sims come up and you are going home you end up tallying up all the records of how a uh, send the da like how what Alice owes to who and how much you have to pay to X person. Now all this thing tallies up like that's the protocol right now between you and your friends. But how do I collect? Like, how do you manage up said so that nobody can like see this is a ledger right now you're seeing over over this side that. Alice pays Bob dollar twenty. Bob pays Char Charlie dollar forty. Now, and this thing has to tally up. But anyone, this think of it like a notebook. Now, this notebook can be written by anyone. Say, you say Alice gets from Bob twenty dollars more, so she doesn't have to pay Bob other twenty dollars. Who is stopping Alice to write that? This is a very potential book flaw. If you have four friends chilling out, hanging out, I think so this is manageable. But when this these corporations are running on, on how they manage the data, mm, I don't think so. So we need to introduce an idea over here. The idea to solve this problem that anybody can write anything like over it comes from digital signatures. Now digital signatures are a very key aspect. There are two parts to it, the private key and the public key. The public private key is represented by SK over here, that means secret key, and the PK means public key. Now, for example, think of the transaction as a message. The message is one component, and the the the, the you every person on the network gets their own private key and secret key. Now, say Alice gets a private key and a secret key. The public, uh, the private key and the secret, uh, public key and the secret key. The secret key is kept by Alice herself because that's how she trans signs the transaction that she has written that sign. The, the transaction, like the way you sign a check, you cannot digitally create a sign and 
forge it like you can forge it next time right you have to create something that's deep down built on cryptography cryptography right now exists very simply very bare bones idea is that there are two components uh, there are two randomly large prime numbers you multiply them and get a really huge number now that number and the really two big prime numbers are go like you cannot reverse it quite easily now reversing it quite difficult and the, the multiplying of two prime numbers is very computationally intensive that's why we have built this whole idea of private uh, this these two keys now you take in the message from the uh, alice and uh, like from alice and she takes a secret key and put them up in a function that function results in a signature so the your signature is dependent on both the facts that how what's the message is and what your secret key is now to verify that bob has to verify that alice did write that he has to take in the public key of alice and the message and signature to uh, these three components to verify whether it's true or false that that transaction or that message was written by alice herself right now even the whatsapp or maybe other communication systems that you use use a certain level of private key and public key cryptography systems inside them so that your messages are encrypted similarly a digital signature is created over here that is utilized uh that is utilized to sign a transaction i think so this is a bit technically thing but you have to put an effort to understand it now over here we think that for, uh, for example we have a ledger over here where we say bob pays alice 10 ledger dollars now ledger dollars is a new term we invented over here that says like we can, and now in, it has a very you can see some binary data imagine it like a uh, what we can say uh, uh, the digital signature and now for now this ledger transactions keep on piling up for example bob pays charlie 10 you pay bob 10 charlie pays you 5 you just see a transactions happening imagine, imagine transaction happening but end of the day you the this whole thing is set up on the fact that someday we would end up transacting for actual money actual cash or maybe uh, the values you have the currency you have and what if the currency was the transaction history think of it that today the history of transaction becomes the currency this is how blockchain uh, bitcoin is right now designed bitcoin is just a ledger a huge ledger that has written that this much money is owned by this one this person this much bitcoins are owned by this person this much bitcoin x owns this per a y a a b c number of coins this is how right now but bitcoin is designed but how do we actually like this this problem blockchain is going to solve the fact that makes you grippy of thinking that it is just a huge nub file that contains a lot of transaction history now this transaction history for example you know you i'm taking a big scale up you are four people sitting in your computers and alice bob charlie and you again same people have a history of transactions you have your own history of transactions your own little notebook where you have written which person has which amount of money and now for example alice uh, get some service from Rob and she pays them 10 ledger, 100 ledger dollars and she announces it to everyone now everyone gets a cop rights in their ledger that say I owe I uh, I owed Bob 10 dollars 100 ledger dollars so everywhere in the ledger it would be written over but how do we contain this like how do we contain this idea 
that when we announce that somebody like for example alice has to pay bob 100 ledger dollars she announces on the network and everybody writes on the net uh, on the ledgers but still you might be thinking this is not how governments and institutions would be working yeah we're coming to that part but it's really complex so we're going to step by step now the your part is we focus on you <laughs> this is a representation of you uh, like a representation of you seeing different kinds of transactions that are coming to you. Alice pays you twenty ledger dollars. Charlie pays you thirty ledger dollars, and Bob pays you fifty ledger dollars. Now all these things are coming together, and you keep on writing them. But there is a thing at play. The main tool over here is cryptographic hash functions. Where did we lose that fact? The main tool of cryptographic hash functions? Hmm. The main thing over here is that when we do the transaction, everybody writes over them. Everybody has the signature written over that. And when the signature gets written, you have this whole ledger. Now, the idea that was introduced by the Bitcoin blockchain was that anybody's most intention like for your example everybody writes their own history of ledger and who how does it maintain consistency for example alice has say 100 ledger dollars according to her ledger and you have think you think alice has like minus 10 ledger dollars something is like you can write anything right still if digital signatures are present in so the thing over here this problem that was solved with blockchain, uh, Bitcoin uh, for blockchain was introducing the most computational work. Now, the blockchain that has the most computational work, the ledger which has the most computational work is going to be the one that has all the histories, like that is going to be the trusted one. Now, did you see over here that when we removed a lot of trust over here it's going to like the trust equation gets removed we see that the whole uh, thing this blockchain uh, this ledger is dependent on cryptographic hash functions now math this mathematics at play is going to control how the trust is built. Now, I would be di deep, deeper diving in how the hash functions work. For example, think of this very function called SHA-256. Looks like some random villain's name, but some or some robotic name over here. But honestly, it's just a function which takes a string input. Now, the string input, for example, over here, the string is three blue, one brown, has a value ha. so shard of 6 3 blue 1 brown so this hash function could imagine it like any random function you have ever done in fun programming you call it you give them a string they give you an out output so right now it gives you a binary output that is a fixed size of 256 bytes now these 256 bytes are of the size uh, of a very certain size so it means you put anything in it and it would pop you out a 256 byte star. Now all these uh, bits of data is combined over in a single uh, this 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 thing and this is non-reversible. This means whatever the input I put, it would result in a very every unique input will get a, a unique output. So it means that and also i cannot go reverse that means if i have a hash i cannot calculate the string this means it's a one way function and one on two like one is dash to one only and you cannot get the reverse back so for example three blue one one will give this if you i put another number say for example i put my name in it it would result in a very different 256 uh, uh different numbers and if I want to know exactly, like for example, I, if you might be thinking like, if I want to change 
three blue two brown i would have to just change flip one of the bits no it's now how it designed to work and if you're thinking that you you can change this over and can change the whole blockchain it would really impact the whole blockchain industry but this thing this the whole cryptography thing of blo uh, blockchain is right now dependent on this very fact that the hash function cannot be convert hash output cannot be converted back to the string and it can be but it would be very much computational you see very much it would involve a lot of supercomputing power and and it basically means guessing where you would keep on trying on different strings and then someday you would get the right hash and then you compare those two but that's not how it works right you cannot think you have to think mathematically but that's not the point of this you have got the idea the hash is one directionally only and the second is unique output every time so it's like a fingerprint every file has its own 256 byte fingerprint think of it like that also there might be some collisions over here but we are taking very rare cases now coming over here the idea that we have to show over here is that for example in the ledger you say for example the output of SHA-256 when putting the ledger on the left side to the output of the right side for example you take the whole ledger's data file convert it into a binary and push it into the SHA-256 function now the SHA-256 function is going to give an output right but you have the, the goal is to make the first 30 bits to be zero now when the first 30 bits are zero what happens uh, bytes are zero what happens is that you have to calculate a number like we are seeing a randomly large number right one zero seven three seven six five four three that large number is called a nouns we keep updating it for example the last digit instead of being three would be converted to four and then five then you keep on guessing till which number you have to compute so that you get the exact number of zeros in the starting now the starting zeros are the most essential part because once you change the nouns that, that determines how much work you have done once you hit the 30 zeros it's like you have got the lottery and you win we will figure out how mining and uh, lot this is why i'm calling it a loud lottery but you get this idea that and the probability of us finding a 30 zeros in the starting of this 30, uh, 256 bit is when we go 1 over, it's like 1 over 2 raised to power 30, which means 1 in 1 billion. So every 1 billion numbers after, we, there's a probability of finding 30 zeros. So yeah, that's how this thing works. You calculate the nouns and then with the ledger. So we put all the things together in the ledger and then you push it to start with this function and then it pops out a number. Everything's clear. If clear, great. If not, put in the comment section down below. And next thing is the main idea that block chain comes from is we take these few transactions, say a the three transactions is seeing the nouns and put it into a block and then make a chain of it and the chain part makes it quite quite unchangeable the unchangeable part means where where this this whole thing derives on this the backbone literally the backbone of how this or whole, whole blockchain thing works upon you see you're seeing three different blocks over here uh, the one starting one the second one the third one Alice pays Charlie 50 less dollars and a signature. We talked about digital signatures a while ago. And Charlie pays you 40 less dollars signature. And then we have 844, like you can see a number with the 8442185, that's an ounce. And then the other one is like you're seeing to remove the nouns, forget the nouns for a while. Just imagine six different, uh, transactions are written over now you might see one two three four four transactions are written over and each has its own hash written over down below right and the down below hashes are actually uh, uh, the, the, uh, the results of how the computation of nouns so you put in the 
computational work that it introduced by the Bitcoin paper. Oh, an interesting fact on the way. The person who invented blockchain, not exactly invented, but popularized it using uh, the uh, Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto. nobody knows who he is. The only way you can figure it out is by knowing who are you are in the Bitcoin uh, the Bitcoin uh, creators, the developers who actually built it. Now, it's also some uh, huge part of it is open source. Open source means that anybody can see the code and how it works, but nobody can change the ledger that is accepted by everyone. So there's the thing at play. Now, you will see three, uh, six transactions broken into three blocks and each having a very huge number down below in it. The number that is, it's called, uh, the number is nouns that we discussed in the previous few minutes ago. Now we push it into the SHA function. It pushes out a result. Now we take this very result that's written on the first end on the left side and put it on the uh, head of the other block. Now think of it like a linked list. The linked list, uh, if you might have attended some DS uh, data structures courses, you might have an idea what a linked list is. Now taking this number and putting it on the top of other block and then using that number, the, including the hash of the previous block, the randomly huge two disk byte thing, putting it with the other two transactions and then calculating a nouns. I'm repeating again, taking the hash of the first one, putting it in to on the top of the second one and then putting in the other two transactions and then calculating its nouns. That nouns means calculating 30 zeros. For example, we are taking just for the time being 30 zeros. Those 30 zeros in the SHA-256 function. No, so the thing is like this randomly huge number keeps on iterating 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like it keeps on increasing till the time you get 30 zeros on the first part of it. And once you hit the lottery, you have got the right one. And next you go over the next one and then that's how the chain is being built. That's the whole idea that I tried to explain that the previous hash is over the uh, the first block. That means a genesis of the, okay, uh, a fun fact point of view. The first part of the whole blockchain thing is called, the first block on the whole blockchain is called a genesis block. I repeat, genesis block. Now the previous hash is taken in uh, over the block and then we have taken in two transactions and a nouns. The, the nouns and the previous hash. Now this results in a hash that is stored over the next one. So the thing that is play at over here is that for example in the first transaction Alice pays Bob 60 ledger dollars we convert it to Alice pays Bob say 700 ledger dollars. Now nobody is stopping Alice to do that right. Maybe, but there's a game at play over here. Mm, but you might be thinking some but thing is wrong, right? Okay, I will try. I will. I will cover this part later. But first, I will try to focus on how exactly blockchain is working so, and how it's like nobody can change anything in it. So once it's inserted, the pre nouns from uh, the previous hash on the second block gets in processed by this these uh, with the transactions and then another nouns is generated and then this nouns uh, now this whole block with previous hash the uh, the true transaction and the nouns is taken into the next hash so you getting the idea of what is happening i've broken up into very small parts the signature the previous hash the nouns and how the hash is calculated now now you're seeing a pattern over here how this chain is being made and it's made of our blocks. So instead of calling it a ledger now, we would be calling it a blockchain. Now, as you might see, we are somewhere where we were in the first slide where I tried to scare you. This is a big thing. Now, how this works is that no. I'm trying to introduce now an idea called miners. Miners are those people in the network 
uh, I should have introduced the network first, but now now I am introducing the network is basically you four friends, and there's some single entity who sign like who tries to like get the transactions right, like who calculates the nouns. The digital signature is done, right? But the uh, calculation of the fact that the the miner comes in and then it says like I am going to take all these transactions in you say 10 15 transactions then calculate its nouns and tell everybody right now what the hash is so whoever gets the hash right for example 30 uh, hash 30 number zeros are gotten like he won the lottery and he can get ledger dollars so what is happening is this entity out of thin air who tries to manage your transactions gets money because there's no central entity over here right central entity over here generally which is respected and reputed in transactions is the banks the banks that hold the currency but in blockchain uh, in bitcoin there doesn't exist any because this is a p2p mechanism where no one is in control complete control so we have to make a system that someone in the whole system gets your uh, mining uh, your dad done right uh, so we have over here three miners who are trying for a mini lottery now they're taking 10 15 transactions write another transaction that this my myself the miner gets say 10 ledge dollars now he calculates the hash and whoever gets the hash first with 30 zeros he gets the lottery he gets that 10 ledger dollars because he wrote it on the notebook and when we he writes on the notebook you get a, on that note not notebook the blockchain <laughs> i was trying to make the transition from blockchain into ledger to the, le and the notebook to ledger to blockchain so if you got have gotten it's great if you haven't go back or go in the uh, comment section down below the miner too now has won the blockchain over as you see so this transaction has overcome the miners get the thing right the, the miners get their own money in the sense a gets uh, everybody gets to know that alice pays bob 20 dollars and charlie pays you 50 dollars the whole thing is to remove the centralized entity and have a distributed control still maintaining trust is the idea that is brought by the miner so once this 936171 the highlighted one gets okay everybody starts mining with the hash of the one that is accepted by everyone so this hash would be used as a previous hash to the next block for getting the idea well, we are going to do something amazing. That is trying to fool someone on the network and trying to realize you can't. So the thing is that this is the network over here and Alice goes over and say writes over somewhere on the top left side that Alice pays Bob hundred ledger dollars. When she didn't got that. Now there's a previous hash and a proof of work. The proof of work is basically the nouns thing that I've been talking all about. The, I, and she requests, like she uh, has written this transaction that Alice pays Bob hundred ledger dollars, but, and you respect, uh, get that thing for us from Bob. And Bob says, I never got that hundred ledger dollars. And you get confused, but Alice never paid Bob then. Maybe this is a lot of confusion, right? But how is blockchain solving it? Blockchain gets this fact is like Alice, she starts by, see, for example, see the top three one, imagine the chain is still there. And there are miners on the network and there's Alice. Alice has written her own fake history of transaction. Say she has gotten hundreds thousands of Bitcoins in her, uh, in her uh, name. So she what she does is she takes in the previous hash pushes it in the main blockchain and then starts writing over it then starts writing uh, then starts writing over it but there are hundreds of miners together on the network too 
they're also getting the transaction histories and are calculating their mini lotteries and they also get they keep on making these lines the trusted blockchain the one the one above is of alice the down below one is of all the miners combined right so now alice is trying to keep up with all the miners so that she has to but now, now the uh, you this there is bob bob has to accept one type of transaction history so over the time whichever the, uh, 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 chain is the longest one the other that guy gets the money uh, that guy that that one is accepted one so alice would have to put in uh, meaning computational work more so that she get can get the chain la- larger so as the chain grows she has to like maintain with the miners and if she fails which she would because combining a person's ability like a single entity on the network and the miners together miners a lot now your idea must be thinking if i can get control of all the miners together i might be able to get over the network and change the stuff in the blockchain network boy you are right yeah if you can get control of all the miners of the network if you choose them that they write histories that way you can but controlling if for example that's the 51% thing if you get control over more than 51% of the network basically you can change everything on the network we will be covering it in the next video now oh, as you see over here that the miners working over uh, the on side of miners they're trying to take in the transaction punch push out hashes of it and then calculate its downs you see that's that's a lot of work put in the, by them but the thing is over here is that the numbers that i have been taking 30 for all the while can change with time it can be 30 20 maybe 10 12 but the idea is so that a certain number of transactions who happen only in that time period this is because we do not want the network to over flood there's a capacity of the network and that is decided computationally by the whole network that at this moment of time whoever gets 25 zeros in the first part wins the lottery and everybody has to accept the fact that this uh, this is the previous hash now that guy gets the money now is he or the, the thing minus incentive too they're maintaining the network and getting the money now you can trans like this is a virtual curry currency basically this currency does not actually exist in form of paper or, or like cash or something like that is physical in nature this exists as binary data on hard drives that's what the core level of it is too. now the block rewards that are received by every uh, miner depends on the time it was done right now it is nearly 6.25 bitcoins and it's going to be 20 till 2023 from Jan 2009 to 2012, it was 50 bitcoins. From number 12 to July 16, it was 25. You get the idea over here that it's geometrically half. Now you might be thinking that the rewards will be quite low. Yeah, rewards will be low, but rewards will be low for miners as time progresses and the valuation of people who bought into network earlier would be higher. And that's the whole point. The people who accepted Bitcoin earlier got bet more uh, Bitcoins over it. The people who are coming, the miners who are joining in right now would get very low, low Bitcoins. For example, 6.25 Bitcoins per block reward they get. Now, in uh, right now, and for in as time progresses, it would half be half. So it would be like three, somewhere between three Bitcoins. That is quite low. This is how it progresses. But think of it like a geometric progression and this is the way that the miners are the one who create the currency. They are like the reserve bank that prints or prints the cash. So these miners that is using this very analogy, 
the total number of bitcoins that are going to be there are fixed and the total number of bitcoin that's being fixed and taking in the rate of how this moves on the estimation is still 2080s or 2070s when i mean 2070 this year thing 2070s or 2080s this would blow up and not exactly blow up but no more it would not be like huge changes in the total number of bitcoins that have been generated so it would nearly stabilize out and we would ex nearly exhaust no, not exactly exhaust but tend to exhaust if you had got the idea from calculus tending limits it would tend to exhaust but it would not exactly ever exhaust because it would be quite small like 0 0.00 or something that a minus would get over time now the, we would talk about right now what's the rate of uh, transactions right now visa handles nearly 1700 transactions on average and maximum capacity of visa is 24,000 but taking in this blockchain uh, by Bitcoin it handles nearly 2400 transactions which is quite low compared to visa this is like 10% of its capacity whole uh, maximum capacity so blockchain uh, Bitcoin somewhere comes over down over here this, uh, the size handling part uh, is quite limited the, the, the block is very small and the blockchain thing is that it's quite slow in the number of transaction uh, the number of limit transactions that can be uh, done in one second uh, once a uh, second that's the whole idea so it's very very slow and uh, with this, uh, you got an overview of how these things would work and somewhere deep down, I think you have gotten the idea of how blockchains work, how uh, how the digital hashes work, how ledgers are, how we converted from ledgers to blockchains, how miners work, how you cannot change anything on the network or how the network works and basically the end of part one thank you for watching and uh, somewhere down there there would be a link to go on the next video happy watching dstit